Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So that basically completes the um, uh, the the food supply chain part of it. So the point uh, is the issue then will be that how do you basically deal with the problems? What we did so far is we have had the ecosystem for the food supply chain. And from the ecosystem, we have we have all the four elements like the supply chain, the resources, the institutions, and uh, and the delivery mechanisms. We have analyzed, and we have found uh, analyzed the this using the grip framework. And what is the point in all this? The the if all this gives us leads us to see the fact that Indian supply chain, the food supply chain, is weak. It is inefficient. It needs further improvements, and the improvements can come in several di different directions. Have to come from several different directions. They have to come from the government initiatives. They have to come from the resource uses. They have to come from the supply chain as well as the delivery mechanisms. So, what we are going to do now is to address one problem of the food supply chain and show how to design. This one. In other words, while we were talking about the problems, how do you solve these problems? So, food supply chain is a vast. Uh, this one, from uh, grains to everything. So, what I thought I would do is the food security supply chain design. I'll consider what is food security supply chain. The food security supply chain is providing food to people. To poor people, which is nutritious, and this is like not giving grains. The PDS or the public distribution system gives you rice, uh, uh, kerosene, sugar, and other kinds of things. They are grains, but they are not nutritious. But here, you want to supply them at affordable prices in an accessible, accessible manner, and create awareness among them regarding. The nutritious food and the issue that their importance of taking nutritious food among all these people and supply it to them. So that's the design. It's an opportunity of eradicating, eradicating hunger and malnutrition in India. So that's what we are going to talk about in, in, in this one. So well, our agenda is what is food security? We'll define that. And our current effects by various stakeholders, governments, NGOs, hawkers, etc. I mean, because this issue is very important, and you know there are two or three billion people in the world, mostly more than forty to fifty percent of the population is um, is power poor. There are lots of NGOs, international NGOs. Foundations, Clinton Foundation, uh, Ford Foundations, and all that, who are interested in. Uh, providing food security, and there are hawkers in street hawkers who actually ultimately the food is provided by them to the poor people. Because we are talking, since we are talking of the poor people here, the the we are uh, the, from the agri the byproduct of agriculture is food. The end product of agriculture, the end goal of agriculture is to provide food to people. So how do you convert whatever Inputs that are given from the agriculture into food, and this is not ordinary food. They are not just buying rice or wheat and then cooking food. But the issue is, how do you supply nutritious food? So, food security indices by World Health Organizations are our approach, and the food security supply chain design, the business processes, the governance, the supply chain coordination, and the supply chain risks, and all that. And conclusion. So, whatever we have learned so far, 
in terms of the ecosystem we are going to apply it to to the food security this month and that is the aim of this lecture. So, what is food security? The World Food Summit in 1996 they defined food security as when all people at all times have access to sufficient safe nutritious food to maintain a healthy and active life. So, that is the definition of uh, this one it has to be a safe nutritious food to maintain healthy and active life and for all people at all, all times. So, that is food security implies both physical and economic access to food that meets the dietary needs, nutritional requirements and food preferences. So, since food is something which you should like, it should taste good. So, it is important that it beats your preferences in addition to dietary needs as well as nutritional requirements. Nutritious food providers have three functions. Make it available at affordable prices and creating awareness to the consumers. Since it is a food which one needs to eat, he has to like it, it should taste good to people and also it has to be create awareness regarding taking nutritious food and otherwise it will get into malnutrition mode. So, this is the, the food security definition of this, but uh, in the name of food security there are lots of uh, uh, things that are done, um, uh, uh, programs that are done, but which they give either cash, uh, they give either grains or uh, they give uh, they give work and so on, but that does not give the food security, that does not meet the goal of food security in this. So, let us see what are the goals, what, how to meet the goals of food security. What are the current efforts by various stakeholders like the governments, NGOs, etc. The government programs for, uh, for nutritious food, major programs to augment availability of food. There is what is called National Agriculture Development Program. We are dealing with Indian conditions here, accelerated irrigation benefit program, fertilizer subsidy, bank loans, free, uh, free electricity and so on. This is if you are a farmer. Major programs to improve economic access to food, public distribution system, Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme, National Food Security Bill and major programs and partnership to improve nutritional security, midday meal programs. Midday meal programs are for the school, school going children in the, the lunch is provided free by either by the government or NGOs. Integrated child development program, Annapurna scheme, Ministry of Rural Development for senior citizens, the nutritional program for adolescent girls and emergency feeding program in 8 districts in Orissa. So, basically there the, this is to show that the government has uh, several programs which, which they offer for this. And performance on the food security schemes has been far below the mandates. The food security programs have envisioned a too narrow and equate food with security with grain security. They have become classic examples of corruption, diversion and adulteration. Food adulteration, milk, fruits and fish with chemicals such as calcium carbide getting deadlier by the day. The cost of implementation of the PD, PDS program is very high. Now, if you want to give if you want to give free rice or uh, at, at a rice one because the, the rice has to be procured from the farmers and then it has to be uh, stored in a warehouse and transported and then the ration shops needs to be organized for each for 6 rupees so each rupee of rations delivered and 4 rupees for each liter of kerosene. So, it is more expensive than uh, uh, what it is. Suggestions for improvement are uh, include replacing the ration cards and with food coupons or UID that is uh, uh, the recent Aadhaar card and using IT for monitoring and visibility. Neither of them can stop corruption and impose the performance. So, what we will try to do what is the existing schemes and what are the problems here. 
and there are lots of efforts by the foundations. Nandi runs several automated central midday meal kitchens and Achai Patra reaches out to 13 lakh children in more than 200 schools in 8 states in India provide them with freshly cooked meal packed in stainless steel containers to, to uh, provide food for uh, the poor and particularly in the midday meal programs for the children. There are lots of efforts by uh, the foundations. Uh, there uh, throughout India there are lots of foundations. I mean I am just mentioning two of them here. Nandi is a uh, runs several automated central midday meal kitchens across the country which prepare and deliver high nutrition noon meals in consultation with National Institute of Nutrition to 8 lakh underprivileged children every day including the tribal areas. So basically 8 lakhs is 800,000 children are uh, fed every day and it is nutritious food they do it in consultation with uh, uh, the National Institute of uh, Nutrition. Uh, Chai Patra also reaches out to uh, 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 one, uh, 30 lakh children to more than 820 schools in 8 states providing them with freshly cooked meal packed in stainless steel containers. So basically they want to maintain hygiene, they want to uh, give it things to the children so that uh, uh, they, when they go to school they are not malnourished. So, but these are all the efforts by uh, the foundations uh, for this. So, we are dealing with what the, what the government is doing and what uh, the foundations are doing. And there are also how do other people, other poor people get food for the daily. So, they are basically cuisines by the sidewalk. There is an article uh, in, for the Kulakata in hawkers in several major cities for example in Mumbai, Delhi, Calcutta, or Ahmedabad etc. serve the food needs of millions of urban poor. In other words, these are basically hawkers are the ones who, who basically have their carts and they cook the food sometimes or they, they cook it at home and then bring the food and you can see the kind of numbers that they have. And they serve the foods of millions of urban poor and these are considered illegal by the municipalities. In other words, they are, it's not considered as a, as a business deal, but it's considered illegal. Calcutta has 150,000 street food vendors cater nearly to 10 million people with 230 types of food. So basically every day 10 million people eat with these people. And you can see the kind of employment these hawkers created. They are self-employed, but they have one or two people helping, particularly even even the households. Uh, this one, so you can see the kind of employment they are creating, and also the variety of food. The vendors wear aprons, gloves, face masks, cover their heads, serve food in thermocol, biodegradable plates serve bottled water and prepare food as per manual published by their, their uh, AII HPH, their uh, association. Initiating microcredit schemes from banks for purchase of casks. So they are trying to want to have microcredit for this. So you have these hawkers who are basically, they are serving the purpose of trying to uh, uh, give food to the people. So, but in spite of all this, so we have the, the uh, food, uh, this one, by there are government schemes, there are uh, uh, NGOs, and there are hawkers who are giving the food, of course you have to pay for it. and there. There are all kinds of schemes here, but if you look at the food security indices by the World Health Organization, Global Hunger Index in 2011 India ranked 67 out of 81 countries. It is composed of three indices, proportion of population that is undernourished, proportion of children who are underweight and under 5 child mortality. These are the indices and India ranks 67. 
and human development index India ranks 134 of 187 and HDI is a comparative measure of life expectancy, literacy, education and standards of living. And malnutrition, integrated child development services 47 percent below the age of 3 years are, are malnourished. Also 47 percent of Indian children under 5 are categorized as moderately or severely malnourished. So, basically you are, if you look at the statistics, it shows that the kind of food security problems that uh, we have, they are not either they are either by NGOs, they are either by by hawkers and so on, then this does not seem to be working because for example, you in, in cities you have 100 million poor people and if this, this they become a disease burden if they are malnourished and these people 50 percent of the Indian children under 5 are categorized as moderately or severely malnourished which means that these children when they grow up they become a burden to the society. So and for all these reasons it is important one looks at take the food def def security definition of uh, by uh, the World Trade Organization and try to implement it in this. How do you can we uh, implement this using our ecosystem framework? What is our approach here? In other words, we have looked at the food security problem, we have looked at the food supply chain and how food goes to people. We are not talking of rich people, we are talking of the poor people and how do you correct whatever is being done? Our diagnosis is if you look at uh, any food, the food has to have vegetables, it has to have potato, rice, pasta, and this kind of things, and also meat, fish, and poultry. So, basically, this is the kind of uh, uh, composition you should have for this. Food security needs to be properly defined, and the delivery processes need to be well designed and their execution monitored. So, what and need articulate changes in the consumption patterns. In both urban and rural areas, percentage of cereal food is declining and high value food such as fruits, vegetables, meat, dairy products and fish is on the rise. Not treated as a supply chain problem. So, if you look at the previous approaches, are they using the well developed supply chain uh, issues are they using the supply chain formation, supply chain planning and, and finally supply chain execution. No, recent advances in technology and in the food vertical, logistics, rise of supermarkets, food processing and packaging, wireless, traceability using RFID are all ignored. We are talking of the Indian scenario, coordination execution are absent. So, because of this we want to design a system which people can use and so on. So, what we do is we want to design a food security supply chain using our ecosystem framework and the idea is making nutritious food available at affordable rates. That is our goal. Our goal is making nutritious food available at affordable rates. So, what is the food security solution to serve 100 million poor, urban poor? Now, we are here we are talking of 100 million urban poor. Why urban poor? There 125 percent of the population is undernourished and in India urban population is about 400 million. So, which means 100 million of them are poor. And uh, why urban? Why not rural? Our solution here uses ICT technologies which are basically available in big cities, may not be available in, in the village assets. So, from the point of view of implementation to start with, we will start with, with the urban. Our solution is for the urban, urban poor and 100 million is, is, a, is a big number. And our, we are also talking of a food security solution. In other words, we want to provide a solution to this, we are not giving the products 
we want to give the food separate food separate solution that is cooked food which is nutritious and make it available affordable and uh, create awareness among the, among the population that is the aim of our this one. So, if you look at uh, this one what is the say if you look at as a treat want to treat it as a supply chain how do you do that. So, we have the public distribution system which is the grains rice wheat and, and sugar and so on which are where which actually gives uh, to the people at uh, at the reducer rates and this is the one that the government is addressing. There is the meat dairy products, uh, meat and dairy products these are needed uh, because of uh, you have to you have to get uh, uh, the other nutrition this one and processed food products and so on. So, here as long as the food is concerned here the PDS the public distribution system all it deals with only this it offers only this. These are all available but they are expensive for the poor people. So, and here on the other hand consumption side we have households and the midday meal programs and the hawkers. The households they take the PDS and cook at the house and basically when they cook they cook whatever is given in the rations and it is not nutritious but still to for the hunger they this one and what the hawkers do they basically source it either from PDS or other open markets and then they cook food and so on. The midday meal programs are sometimes supported by the PDS like Nandi, Achaipatra and so on and they basically have uh, they are basically supported uh, partly by the governments and they, they cook the food. They have kitchens, automated kitchens and huge equipment uh, to create hygiene food and then they supply to through trucks and so on they supply uh, this the food to uh, the in the afternoons to the children and of course they are the consumers. Now here if you if you look at what is missing between here and here you know if you want to give a give a food, food solution you know if you basically what uh, Nandi does is to have a distribution center and a kitchen. You know for example for Nandi or, or Achaipatra they have their own kitchens and each kitchens are huge they basically 100,000 they cook for 100,000 people and uh, they basically supply to, uh, uh, to the midday meal programs through the vehicles. Now, you could do the same thing here supposing these kitchens are standardized they are hygienic they are tested they are certified uh, according to any of the um, uh, ISO certification and so on. These are distribution centers where you store all this in a temperature sensitive warehouses. So, these distribution centers could be from any of these private uh, owners. In other words, in some, in some sense we are trying to re remove this PDS. You need not have to, you need not have to procure from the farmers at various rates uh, for the sake of public distribution system. Instead of that you can replace supply of this to the households by supplying nutritious food through hawkers to the households. That is our aim. So, the distribution centers need not have to be government owned. They can be either more reliance or whoever their distribution centers available for uh, the food grains and one can use those things. And the kitchens there could be uh, several kitchens for a big city depending on the population there could be say, kitchens of their sizes and if it is a big city then these kitchens could be housed in five star hotels. Or, or some places depending on where the hawkers and other place this one. So, all these people for example, uh, the hawkers, uh, the midday bill program givers and the kitchen uh, cooks and the distribution center people 
as they need vocational training because remember if you take a particular city where which has 100,000 hawkers if there are 100,000 hawkers and for that how many kitchens do you need how many people cooks in this kitchen and other people and if your distribution center and so on so this creates a huge employment but for that employment you need that you need to train them this is education for employment so vocational training for employment so for that kind of thing they you need to create vocational training currently there are lots of government uh, vocational training programs but the vocational training programs currently they don't they don't provide is uh, guarantee employment but here you are having employment and uh, self employed and you are seeking uh, vocational training i think some of the government programs can be directed towards this and i added to this it's all on the it backbone in other words whatever wherever the hawkers are whatever they sell it goes onto the cloud whatever the kitchen is they goes onto the cloud and what are all the products here whatever the distribution center as far as this program is concerned it's all on the cloud so what is the advantage of this kind of architecture and how are you going to solve the problems that we face today by the food security problem and what are those problems let us discuss those supposing the hawkers can they can they their vehicles for example are now uh, very uh, elementary vehicles and they can the hawker somebody can design a vehicle with uh, solar uh, refrigerators uh, with solar cookers and gas refrigerators gas fired refrigerator refrigerators so that these people whatever uh, the food they have they can be stored stored here and the solar heater because it's a known program or in the because given the indian conditions you can have solar solar heaters here and the hawkers are designed well designed and they are enabled with gps so with the gps they can you can track where the hawker is where the hawker vehicles are you can basically uh, track where they are and the kitchens basically can supply can can uh, cook the food that are basically given by the hawkers in other words the kitchen staff can do crowd sourcing of the from the hawkers regarding what is the kind of food that is liked and what is it be, being sold and so on so in a in a time, matter of one week or something you can know what is the kind of thing that are being sold and if there are festival seasons what are the things that people expect and so on the the sweets and so on the hawkers themselves are currently uh, private owners and they when they sell this and they have the on the cell phone they can identify on the cloud is the uid backbone the identification backbone you can store the ration card data here and the uid data here and the hawker can identify from the thumbprint shown shown on his cell phone can identify whether he is a ration card holder and the hawker gives a discount to the ration card holder and if others other than ration card holders go there they get at the same price in other words the hawker is only had need to sell this at a discounted price to the ration card holders to the poor people if others go there he can sell at any of his own price and there are certainly certain items that are given to the hawker which are nutritious and that has to be sold at the discounted price even to the ration card holders but other things if he sells he sells a bottle of coke or a bottle of water and so on they can be at the other prices so the hawker is basically is not he could do whatever he is doing the only thing is in stuff his cooking he takes it from the kitchen and also in stuff he has to basically is accountable for what he does and all his activities are being traced by the cloud so in other words this hawker becomes a gps and the location of the hawkers you can determine depending on the demand 
So, depending on the midday demand of wherever lunches and so on, if they are office places and all that, you could after an initial estimation, you can you can solve an optimization problem and come come with the uh, with the location uh, solution to the location of the hawkers and so on. So, similarly, the location of the kitchens and how many kitchens if it is a big this one and if it is there are various kinds of uh, uh, requirements there is vegetarian people there are people who eat meat there are people uh, who you want halal and so on so basically they have to uh, 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 provide uh, facilities for that and also whatever leaves the kitchen they have to be packed and there is an a tagged electronic seal so that when it goes to the hawkers so that no manipulation is done no adulteration is done so if there is any seal opening then the cloud immediately knows if the seal is manipulated then the cloud immediately knows about this so and then from the kitchen depending on the demand this is supplied like by a small truck uh, like a milk run in the in the manufacturing from the kitchen to the hawkers. So we have to basically optimize uh, the location of the kitchens, location of the hawkers, and depending on the density of population, which part of the city they are in, and so on. So and once the hawker gives a discount to the this one, he gets it back when he purchases things from the kitchen next day. All the transactions are online and all the transfers, money transfer, everything goes on through the backbone. And how do you stop adulteration? Adulteration happens, usually adulteration happens at the places where uh, uh, at the hawkers and at the before the households and so on, so the distribution. And the distribution centers which are owned by private people and the kitchens which are certified they basically have tests to find out whether there is any alteration and there is traceability that happens using sensor networks and you can find out who has applied, who has adulterated this. So there is a check on adulteration. Second, the second one is the if you are in a ration card, there is a lot of corruption, but here you are stopping all the corruption, you are supplying the food to the people and whatever. Uh, the, the people get a discount on the food they have and food is not adulterated that is checked. So whatever, whenever somebody eats the food it is on the cloud. So the hawker knows who are eligible and then, then this one and finally you are giving a solution to the problem not the products because by from these kitchens you make sure that you have nutritious food. You have nutrition, nutrition analysts who are basically supplying this food to, uh, uh, supplying their advice to the kitchens and it is cooked and sent to here and so on. So basically the, the point here is it may look, it may look a bit complex, but it is not complex. It is happening, for example, the Achaipatra, Nandi and other Sanjeevas are doing this right now kitchen supplying to midday meals and they transfer this wire trucks and they get back and then do all the reverse logistics and all that. There are distribution centers which are organized now. So everything is there but it is in piecemeal. All that we are doing is putting it everything together and integrating it by means of an IT backbone and also giving vocational training to people. So this is the food security solution that we have. It can be, uh, it can be implemented in a small scale. It can be implemented in a large scale, and so on. So that's where the whole thing is. And the IT backbone can be organized by any of the service IT service providers, whether TCS or uh, Infosys or any of these people. And the kitchens can be organized by any of these five-star hotels. It's a big business opportunity for the people. And of course, the, the current retailers will be happy to organize this and everybody will be paid as he delivers to this. As the hawkers sell, they get the money. 
when the hawker gets uh, this one next day, uh, the, uh, the kitchen gets the money from the kitchen. The well, as they deliver, it best back to this one. So it's like a pull mechanism that happens. And so since it is a well thought of ordinary uh, supply chain, this one where several supply chains exist, it can be very easily optimized, and you can have software driven. You can automate the whole thing, not the automate goods process but the financial and information processes can be automated and you can have uh, uh, WMS packages and enterprise resource planning and you can also imp include the training to various people here and the HR management, human resource management and so on. So it is like uh, a big enterprise uh, that needs to be managed here. So. The food security supply chain, what is the strategy? What we are trying to do is orchestration of the food supply chain in urban areas as food value chains to hawkers, schools, outlets which which are ISO certified. The strategic partners, who are the strategic partners? Warehouses and distribution centers, kitchens, hawkers, they are the partners here. Governments and school managements, you need the permission of the corporate corporations, city governments as well as the state government as well as the central government. Vans to carry food packets to the schools and to the hawkers from the kitchens. There, there are there are milk, there are vans, this is called milk runs uh, to carry food packets to the schools. Waste disposal, IT monitoring and call centers. Microfinance, all the hawkers can be microfinanced, vocational training institutes and hawker vehicle manufacturers. So you require 1.5 million hawker vehicles, it is a big, big uh, market. So and that can be in a, that can be a big business too. Electrical equipment innovators, solar gas enabled heaters, refrigerators, automated kitchens. So you can, you can basically make the, the whole thing green the whole thing uh, power uh, less power consumption and also clean and hygiene so if you are, if you are cooks and uh, and the nutritious specialists they they are the ones who will, who has to provide the uh, the inputs and everything is done in other words what we are trying to do here is to use the information communication technologies to counter corruption to counter alliteration and to to, uh, to be with the track and trace mechanisms and so on and also integrate the entire supply chain integrated the entire food supply chain so what are the business processes creating awareness on food nutrition and health relations this is one of the problems you see the issues here are 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 connections you know, for example, you have to create connections with the people and uh, uh, educate them on food nutrition and health. Preparation of the menu by crowdsourcing. Procure the food material from suppliers. The processed food manufacturers, meat and milk vendors and store in the distribution center. Certification of quality at each stage of the supply chain. I mean, this becomes uh, uh, an issue, but it is it is a must. Transfer of materials from the distribution centers to the kitchens on a daily basis, or as required, or as ordered. This is like if you look at uh, organizations like McDonald's, you know, in a place like Singapore, which has hundred uh, or more McDonald organization, McDonald outlets, and there are three or four warehouses spread over the city. And when they order the food, when the food the stuffs, so the, there are trucks who give it and so on. There is not much of a space in the McDonald outlets for uh, storage. And in fact, there is nothing stored at the end of the day. So whatever is needed is supplied and then uh, the whole thing ends by the end of the day. So we need to plan, you know, what I am saying is, there are these tech, there are these kinds of methodologies and the supply chains which are available in the market today may not be in India but 
uh, by other companies like McDonald's and others. So we can take leave from those things, the best practices and try and to build this system. The delivery of the food packets from the kitchens to the hawkers, schools and other outlets using delivery vans. Return of unsold food for disposal. In other words, this is one of the things uh, that one they need not to store, neither the hawkers nor the kitchens can store the food which is unsold. So, it has to be the food on delivery. Now, as the food is delivered, it is manufactured. So, we try to balance the the the, uh, the demand with the supply and as far as the food is concerned and uh, nothing is left in the in the market. And of course, one has to look at the financial supply chain. In other words, the, this is where the uh, the IT backbone plays a, a very important role who pays for. And they, I mean, the hawkers are the ones who are collecting the final money from the people, and it has to be returned and the and and so on at the at the proper time. And the hawkers, of course, can get uh, help uh, in terms of uh, uh, their business, and also in uh, by uh, giving them the hawker vehicle with GPS and others, and also microfinance their business. So, execution using smart technologies. In other words, we are using here the execution using smart technologies. This, this is a smart business network. Now, the business network consists of some 500,000 people, 1.5, 1, 150,000 uh, hawkers themselves and the other employees and there, there are 10 million people who are eating. Uh, the food and so on. So, their stakeholders, if you look, it, it crosses, uh, it is mind boggling this one. So, how do you do the streamline execution of food security chain for the urban food or smart business network that uses GPS, it uses RFID, it uses UAD, it uses sensor networks, mobile call center, etc. Brainstorming and discussions with stakeholders would certainly lead to an executable food security system to, rec to replace the current corruption ridden inefficient system. So, what is the food security ecosystem? The food security ecosystem is here you have the PDS meat, dairy and fruits, you have distribution centers, kitchens, hawkers, schools and consumers. This is the service chain that we have. And what are the resources that we have? The farmers and land resources, water, energy, power resources, food processing industry and dairy clusters, human resources, financial resources, government banks, micro this one, hawker push carts, manufacturing, kitchen design and food research labs. Particularly we are emphasizing on nutritious food, we need food research labs. So, these are the kinds of appropriate resources that we need to run this ecosystem. And here we have regulations, the regulations on like KPMC Act and so on and minimum support price ration cards, they have to be replaced. So, there is this I have put it here because these things need to be negotiated. Municipality and ration shops, quality control and hygiene, citizen groups and NGOs, they are the ones stakeholders institutions who would supply. And here, what about uh, the service delivery, logistics and transportation? Now, see when we are considering here the logistics and logistics is an important thing and the transportation is not intercity, but within the city and the transportation is important because it has to be temperature sensitive. You are transporting food, communication and information technologies, yes, food courts and schools. You know, it need not have to be hawkers always. It can be your supplying to schools, it can be supplied to food ports. So, cloud data records and auditing, hawker carts with GPS and sensor networks, vocational training through NREGAS. There are government schemes through which you can do the vocation. So, what whatever we have discussed here, this ecosystem diagram shows you everything here in all this. So, if you want to solve the food security problem, 
look at it and do what you have to do when. So, our ultimate goal is the consumer here. The consumer need to be supplied with, with nutritious food. That is the final goal. And how do you do it? You require all the delivery mechanisms, all the resources and deregulation of several of these, the help of the governments, municipalities and so on. And ultimately, you have to execute all this. How do you execute this? So, the execution requires any of the three or four governing mechanisms that we have discussed before. It has to be either there is a all these people elect a board and it has a, there is a board that uh, the hawkers and other people and that drives this or is there a lead player? Is there a lead player who can who can drive this? Either uh, any of these uh, big retailers or any of these uh, big hotels or the restaurant owners, they can run this or it can be an orchestrator. So, the governance becomes a big issue here. So, ecosystem enabled process changing delivery process to supplying nutritious food. So, you have, to make, you have to make a big impact here changing the delivery process to supplying nutritious food rather than grains. Legalizing current stakeholders such as hawkers and other private food suppliers. Obtaining grain through open markets. Identification using biometric schemes. Crowdsourcing the menu from the customers. Certification and quality at each stage in the chain. Vocational training of all business participants. Microfinance for small business such as hawkers. Designing a cooperative or orchestrated small business network for public private partners in place of government supported welfare schemes managed by bureaucrats. So, you can see such a complex problem as supplying food to people. We are trying to design and solve this using the ecosystem framework. Well, is it practicable? Is it applicable? I do not see why not. But it is addressing the crucial problems of supplying delivery of nutritious food. Is it nutritious? Yes, it is nutritious because it is done in certified kitchens. So, you are, you are trying to solve the problem of this one from food as a grains to food as cooked food or pre prepared food and you ensure that it is ensured in the pre cooked food is both fresh as well as nutritious. And monitoring and control by cloud based control system that is data collection, mining and fraud detection capabilities. One of the things that I see here is you can you can have fraud detection capabilities inside. You can have very easy to have a to design a fraud detection and give alarms. Uh, either to the hawkers or to the people who are monitoring it. If you look at what is the performance, uh, look at uh, the performance comes through quality of the food that you are supplying, the sales, customer satisfaction and stakeholder happiness. That is how the performance has to be judged here. In other words, if you have people who are ever not eating, their health improves, they do not go to the doctors and so on. Uh, that is the customer satisfaction. Stakeholders, all the hawkers, all the employees, all the kitchens, everybody need to be happy. And of course, sales is a, is a, is the one and also the quality of uh, the food. So, nutritious food manufacturing and delivery. Design of nutritious food for children, pregnant women and working young population is a well researched topic. So, what I am saying here is nothing you need here, you need to do have a discovery. You know everything, it is available even in India. All that you have to do is to bring it to the fore, create the scale and make it at the, to make things at affordable prices. And manufacturing of processed food as per these norms can be easily done following the practices in other countries. The scale of 600 million customers provides incentive for food manufacturing companies for developing highly agile adaptive nutritious food supply chain 
to produce the products at affordable prices and make them accessible. So, with this kind of scale 600 million which which people eat day in and day out. So, it is 600 million per day it is not like a car that you buy once in 10 years or once in 5 years, but here it is food that you eat every day. So, that is the kind of market you are talking about and the, the answer to food security in India is, is processed food which is freshly cooked food which is supplied here. So, if you are looking at cost, what are the supply chain costs that you have? You have the shipping cost, the kitchen product cost including tax, total transport costs, hawker margins, kitchen costs and shipping costs. So, you can add all these costs and then see what is the total cost. Now, you may say because I have a sophisticated IT monitoring system. I have this uh, hawkers which are margins and I have the big kitchens which are doing this it will be costly. The answer is no. Because of the scale economies it is going to be cost less because you have talking now of a streamlined processes there is no wastage and there are no everything is sort of done very efficiently because of the scale and that gives you the total cost which is which is less. And what do you talk of the governance? The management challenge of a food security supply chain network is the coordination of activities of sourcing, production, distribution, variety of services like vocational training, transport, etc. Also the following are the daily activities. Selection of the menu for the kitchens and suppliers. What will the supply, how it is used in cooking, product taste and quality, the production and delivery schedules, how much to produce and when of the kitchens, the capacity and upgradation of kitchen equipment, new recipes, etc. Special foods for children, mothers and pregnant women and delivery in their location, quality assurance across the chain and its maintenance, migration of mitigation of adulteration, pilfering, etc. So, these are all the things special challenges for a food security supply chain that we have. Now, how are you going to mitigate this or when given this? So, we have a governance of the food security. Here you have manager sourcing. The manager sourcing he does from the meat, dairy and vegetables and fruits and so on. Whatever items that are required if they have to be they are fresh they need to be procured he does that. If they have to be just transferred from the uh, distribution centers he does that and if he has to talk with the government and get under the public distribution system he has to do this. And then we had the food preparation. The warehouses, kitchens and food processing. So, there is a manager, a chief chef and so on. As a manager distribution, the distribution need to go to schools and hawkers and food courts etc. and you have to basically you have to do uh, uh, transportation and that is there is a manager distribution. And you have manager services. So, the, what are the services? I mean this is a very important function here. This is waste management vocational training, hygiene and quality and other ICT services. There are other services that uh, we actually need to manage this. There is a manager services. So, all these people, all these manager everybody are connected. They are monitoring and execution call center. All these managers are there is an execution call center. So, this call center basically through GPS and others uh, they connect to to the kitchens there are any problem they connect to the hawkers they connect to the schools and they connect to the transportation and so on so execution is done through this call center so whatever happens anywhere is all recorded here and of course there is the data there are the stakeholders here and there is an executive director and there is an advisory board 
and quality control and business development are all done through this. And advisory board, restaurant chains, industry CEOs, government, city governance, everybody is here. So, in other words, you have here a governance system that works which involves all the stakeholders. We have the government, we have the city governance, we have all the people and this is, I mean you can see this is more corporate than the corporates. But here with this, this kind of governance system for the food security is needed to deliver the food in a proper way and so on. So, that is the, so what we are trying, what we have learnt under the ecosystem, the GRIP framework, we are trying to apply to the food security problem. Although this may look hypothetical in its entirety here, the, the, the big problem, but the small problems are, are uh, implemented by the NGOs and the governments and so on, but in a highly inefficient fashion. Here integrates streets as a supply chain coordination problem and then we, we do this. So, the network consists of half million stakeholders in big cities. Majority of them are hawkers or small entrepreneurs. The asset intensive part of the network are the kitchens and the distribution centers. The distribution centers can be shared service with the big retailers and the kitchens have asset specificity. This is becomes important. The kitchens are the ones which are the expensive ones. And the governance model can be an orchestrator type managed by third party such as an NGO or one of the lead players such as the kitchen owners can manage the supply chain. So, it can be big restaurant owners who can organize this and so on. So, there is the network coordination that happens. So, what are the areas in which we need skill training? Warehouse distribution retail staff, processed food outlets, cooks, chefs and so on, hawkers, call centers, IT workers for monitoring, transporters, train managers for execution, food inspection and hygiene. Total number needing may add up to several lakhs in big cities. So, this is what you are called education to employment or skill training to employment and these are needed. And what are the supply chain risks? The political social pressures for getting the permissions that is the biggest problem. Creating nutrition awareness among consumers. This is another thing. I mean, it is a big social networking problem here. You require lot of connections to make this happen. And given the complexity of this, I know people may shy away from doing it. Creating nutrition awareness among consumers and comp compromise on quality and hygiene. You know, because of haste, because of unavailability of some material, you want to compromise on quality and hygiene. Misunderstanding by hawkers. Resistance by organized restaurant and Kirana shop owners. So, if they treat this as a competition for them, then you can have some problems. Uh, IT technology adoption barriers. Uh, you want to have, uh, you, if you want to do this uh, 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 kind of IT monitoring and all that, you have to do waste disposal and recycling. These are the kind of risks that that happen here. Talent needed to convince all the stakeholders including the government. So, the kind of talent that you need like we saw in the, if you if you have seen the Lee and Fong this one, I mean this is uh, the social networking skills are much more important in this. So, is there a proof of concept through the pilot project? Everybody asks me when, when there is a big project like this, we need a proof of kind this one. Do you need one? I do not think so. We put together all the best practices from various earlier implementations and organize them to create a high impact food security solution that generates millions of jobs. Our concept is already implemented in parts very successfully by NGOs Nandi Achapatra for the midday meal programs and by more than 1 million hawkers catering food 
to millions of people in various cities. So basically what, what we are saying here in summary is that we presented a well orchestrated food security supply chain network design for urban poor as a resilient network of alliances by streamlining and enhancing the food value chains to hawkers, schools and other food outlets while ensuring certification of quality of the food at each stage in the chain and is also providing opportunities for vocational training and microfinancing to all the stakeholders. Well, that's what we did. So this is like Henry Ford saying that he did nothing, nothing new. He put together all the uh, things that all the people, his predecessors have done. So it's the same thing that we are saying here. Supply chain coordination and governance are of fundamental importance to attain the objectives of food security supply chain network. So what are our conclusions? Our suggestion is streamline execution of food security chain to the urban poor, which is a business network made smart using GPS, the RFID, UID, sensor networks, mobile call centers, etc. For rural poor, district-wide distribution centers and kitchens with McDonald type outlets or food courts may be a good solution. So we, I told you that in the beginning that we are not dealing with the rural this one, but this is an afterthought. Warehouse location should be based on population statistics and location specific needs. Brainstorming and discussions with stakeholders would certainly lead to executable food supply chain to replace the currently corruption ridden inefficient system. And finally, apply the same thinking to healthcare, to education, to hospitality and others. Now, for example, healthcare, you know, you can see you have big hospitals, you have research centers, you have uh, small uh, hospitals and you have quacks who do, who do this in the villages and so on, small players. So you can interconnect them and have a healthcare solution and similarly for education and for hospitality and tourism. Thank you very much.